Okay, I want to welcome everyone to the service this morning. Um, is that, is it right? Um, some years ago, um, I was just trying to figure out like what is true in this whole argument of Calvinism versus Arminianism. Um, and yeah, I mean, it looks like some passages definitely are on this side, some on that side. How do we make sense of this? And, and um, so I started, I've been reading in the New Testament for some time, just Kind of, um, I'm not sure how many times I've read through it in the last couple of years, but but um, whenever I would see something that I felt like, well, that that speaks to this side of the issue, then I would highlight it in green. Well, I saw my turn coming up, and so I started uh, going through and cataloging all these in a, in a sheet. And, and, you know, let's, let's decide this once and for all. We can lay it to rest and not have to, at least maybe I can lay it to rest. I don't, I don't have to just, you know, I, I want to know what, I, what, I, what do I believe about this. And um, now let me just read down through. I don't know, Randy, you might be able to. I know you've looked into it some as well. Um, there's Tulip. I'm going to, there's five points to the Calvinist side, am I right? And then there's, I also have five points. And the printer did not, this was a colored thing and it's not, it's black and white and it's rubbing off and so I'm, let me see. Um, all right, Calvinism is man is unable to respond, is unable of self to respond to God. The Arminianism, sinners can, uh, sinner can do good and respond to God. Uh, Calvinism, God elects according to his good pleasure. Arminianism, Arminianism, God elects on the basis of foreseen faith. So God foresees your faith and elects you. Um, Christ died for the elect. Christ died for all under Arminianism. Um, Calvinism, irresistible election, and um, Arminianism would say man can resist God. Calvinism says elect can never lose salvation, and Arminianism says believer can lose salvation. Now, I basically was, was going through looking at I think it would maybe fall under the two two different points, and that would be um, eternal security and and uh, predestination. Which, yeah. Um, now I'm just going to focus this morning more on the eternally secure or not, and I think we I think we can lay it to rest after this morning. I hope we can. Um, but let's have a word of prayer before we dive into this and uh, just ask God to lead us. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the, the very clear passages. And thank you for the, um, the, the things that challenge us and challenge our understanding. Father, you're, you're so far above our ways that we can't understand you, and yet we, we seek to follow you. We seek to be, um, to be your, your disciples, your, your uh, friends, and, and we seek also eternal life to be secured for us. Um, just go with us this morning, lead us into all truth, and uh, we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. 
Now, I might just say on the outset of this that I didn't really look at arguments. I, I'm sure I could have found debates and stuff on YouTube or whatever and, and then try and wage, wage uh, you know, just help, help figure out what are the arguments that are out there. This was not, I, I, I didn't do any or much of that. I just went through scripture and tried to let scripture interpret scripture. And part of that is, um, and I tried to, I tried to find this like hermeneutics, you know, and Randy, you've talked about it. You let the clear or plain, um, shed light on the obscure. Am I saying it right? Um, so anyway, I want to first look at the, um, a little bit at the Old Testament, um, what is the character of God? Because I don't think God's character changes. God never changes, right? So um, if we could just touch on um, the Old Testament, um, if you look at um, Deuteronomy 32, and I don't know if I'm going to read all the verses. I'm afraid we're going to, I mean, this is a massive topic, right? <laughs> to, there's, there's 80, some 80, some passages that I have cataloged. And so we're not going to go through all of them. Um, we'd be here until, I don't know, I don't know when um, to go through all. But, um, okay, this is the last the last uh, part of Deuteronomy. Um, why did I get this wrong? Okay, thirty uh, chapter thirty two. It's forty eight through the end. Um, maybe I. Let me see. And the Lord spake unto Moses uh, in the selfsame day, saying, Get thee up into the mountain of Ab Abiram, unto, the, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho, and behold, the land of Canaan, and I will, that I will give, which I will give unto the children of Israel for a possession. And die in the mountain, whether thou goest up. And be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people, because ye trespassed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin, because ye sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. Yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go in, go thither into the land which I will give unto the children of Israel. So, I feel certain Moses was, he walked with God. You know, he, he, he knew God's heart. He was one of God's, one of, one of God's people. Um, and yet he was not allowed into the promised land. Now, does that mean he wasn't in the promised land of heaven? Um, I feel certain that's not the case because who showed up with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, it's Moses and Elijah, right? So I feel certain God did not bar him from from the eternal home that we all look forward to. But I think he was set out as an example. Be you don't strike the rock twice. You don't. Um, yeah, and that speaks to another thing, another subject. Um, you know, if you if you know Christ. And you leave, can you be redeemed after that? Um, but we're not going to get into that this morning. Um, okay, another passage, um, Ezekiel 18, and let's go 23 through 30. Ezekiel 18. And I'll read 23 through 30, but let me just give a little bit of, this is the passage where it says, um, if a man be just and doesn't worship idols and 
treats his neighbor right, his neighbor's wife leaves her alone, um, doesn't, doesn't, um, doesn't do violence, gives his bread to the hungry, covers the naked, um, doesn't take usury, neither hath taken any increase. Um, let me see. He executes judgment. He walks in my statutes and he keeps my commandments. Um, he's going to live, right? And then if he begats a son and he does, the son does the exact opposite, um, he's going to die. And then if that son begats a son, so now we're to the grandson, if he begets a son, he's going to live. If he looks at his dad and says, no, I don't want that. I'm going to follow God. He basically goes through the whole thing again. Um, he's going to, that grandson is going to live. It's how you live. The, the sins of the, basically the sins of the fathers. It doesn't matter what the sin of the father is. As far as what you do, you're going to answer for what you do. And it goes on. Okay, now these verses, um, 32, I mean 23. Have I any pleasure at all in the wicked that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should, should return from his ways and live? But when the righteous turn from his way and, the right, and from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and doth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass, he that trans trespassed, and in his sin he hath sinned. In them shall he die. Yet ye say, The way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he hath done shall he die. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness, he that hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall, be, he shall save his soul alive, because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal and your ways unequal? Wherefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions. Yeah, I was going to go through verse 30. Okay, so we, we basically, you're going to, um, you're going to have to answer for the way you live. At the time you die, were you living right or were you not, is, is the way I read that passage. Um, now, I, um, what I did, I, I went through and, and like I said, cataloged as, as many as I found. As I was going back through, I, I tried to put a weight on one side or the other. So one to three. Was it a, a lousy argument or uh, lousy? That's not a good word. Um, let's just say, uh, okay, this passage, um, you could make argument against this pretty easily based on other scriptures. You know, this, this might not hold up to other scriptures if, if you bring in this argument or that, okay? Um, that would maybe get a one. If, if it's so strong of an argument that it's hard to bring another scripture in to where this is obviously, you know, then, then it would be hard to counteract that, that argument that he's making right here, then that would be a three. So I went down through, and some passages have both in them. And so sometimes there's one passage where it's a two and a two. That, so it's a tie in that, in that specific passage. So, but I, I tried to weight it one side or the other. It's not fun to just have ties all the time, right? So here we go. I tried to find some that we could 
could dig into and oh let's let's look at some that Jesus said um I'm just gonna there's I don't know and and also another thing there's some that are duplicated in some of the parables or some of the teachings that Jesus gave so I tried not to every time they sh that 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 argument is made you know in the, if it's in the four gospels it's not fair to have that one argument that all four gospels you know have all that weight added to one side okay um try to be fair with all of this it, it, it was it's it's a it could be a work in progress and i'd like to if you if you're interested i have a couple extra sheets and if, <laughs> if you want to see if Reweight my arguments if you'd like, or add in. I mean, it it is it goes through Matthew through Revelation. That in that order, and pretty much anyway, there might anyway. Um, and so, if you find an argument, you can quickly see if it's in my lineup. And um, so, yeah. All right. Um, turn with me to John, chapter. Four, I think. Um, verse. Well, let's read 13 and 14. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. Okay, I'd say that's fairly, fairly clear. Um, John 6, 30, uh, let me see. Here's a couple that it's, it's sprinkled around a little bit. Um, let me see, let's... Let's read um, th I think it's 37, 51 and 63. So 37 says, "All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out." Um, 51 is let me see. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, and I will give for the life of the world. And 60, 67. Oh, okay, this is, um, let me see. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? So there's an illusion to the, the idea that you could leave. You know, they were his followers and, I mean, his 12. And he's saying, at least I, I read it as, you know, he's saying to the, to the 12, maybe, maybe more. Are you going to go away as well? Um, okay. Um, John... 10, 27, and 28. Um, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So, I mean, Moses was plucked out. Is this something, uh, uh, well, plucked out? That's, I mean, he didn't, he wasn't able to go into the promised land. Is this a new teaching in the New Testament that we can't we can't um, can't get away from God's grace, so to speak? And this would be a verse that that I think is is um, I would say it's a pretty strong argument. Um, and I know the Arminian. The Arminian view is that um, 
No man can pluck them out, but personally, someone can walk away. Is that? I think I'm right on that. Um, okay, let me see. Um, if we back up a little, uh, John 8, I think I want to catch. I'm sorry, it, it, it's tough to know which of these passages to pull out and and look at but um, John this is this is one of the ties uh, is I have it um, as a tie anyway John 8 35 and 36 um, and let's back up to 34. Um, Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Um, 51. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. And 60, uh, what? Something, something went awry there. Okay, there is. <laughs> All right. Um, so there is, there's some of the, passages that that would be um, I think would be used or whatever in the Armenian I mean uh, the Calvinistic view like that there, there's there's no way for you to lose your salvation if if you um, if you choose to follow God you you are saved eternally um Okay. Let me see. I want to I'm going to jump around a little bit because now I want to look at some that are that that have both um both sides to the argument. I think this I'm not sure. I have it color coded and I'm not sure. This one I have weighted to one side, but I have it anyway. Let's let's look at first Peter. Um Wow. I know I'm jumping way back and there's a lot in between here. Um First Peter two. Uh, let's just read six. Hang on. Yeah. Six through eleven. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe... He is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallow, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, wherefore unto you also they unto uh, where, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but now are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Um, just right there at the end, just the idea of warring against the soul. Um, if you're saved and you can't lose it, why, why does he even say 
it's going to be a war against your soul. Um, but, but it says here, shall not be confounded. It says in verse 8, whereunto they were also appointed. Um, so is it this thing of, you know, it is appointed and, and um, people just will do that, uh, whatever. Um, let's go to 1 John 2. Um, and this maybe carries that idea fairly, fairly far. Um, and I have, let me see, let's just go 19. Let's see, is that too much? Verse 19 and then 24 through 28. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So we have the idea that if you, if you leave the teachings of Scripture, um, it's obvious that you were not saved in the first place. Um, okay, verse 24, Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that He hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you, concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing, let me see, but the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is true, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we shall have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Uh, if ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Um, I went ahead and read the last verse there in that chapter. Um, so just the thing of if... Are we, are we going to abide in Him? Um, or can we, yeah. Are we going to be seduced? Um, okay, let's go, let's go to... Um, and there's, there's so many... Scriptures. I, I'm 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 distracted a little bit because I'm I uh, I have it here the ones that I want to bring out, but then I'm seeing the other green all over my Bible, and it's like, well, what does that, I don't know if I should add this in right now. Or anyway, um, let's go. Uh, let's back up now, and and. What I, what I tried to do, and, and maybe I've missed some major ones, but I tried to bring out some that are pretty strong on the Calvinistic side, some that are more to both sides. Um, let's look at some that are uh, more on the Armenian side. Um, 1 Corinthians 10, 4 through 12. 1 Corinthians 10. Oh, shoot. Okay, and here, um, I think I'm going to just, is it, wow, yeah, I think I need to read all of it, but um, I wanted to make mention, at least, 
that um, it's talking about Moses um, in verse 1, how all our fathers passed under the cloud and passed through the sea, were all baptized unto Moses and in the cloud and in the sea, did and did all eat the same spiritual meat? Did all drink the same spiritual drink? Verse 4, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. That rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our... Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted, neither be idolaters as some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us be fornication, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. And verse 13, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be attempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Um, I've, this, is, this is a three. Um, this stuff was written for our admonition. Um, this is the very argument that is being made. You can be walking with God and and lose that fellowship is the way the way I see it anyway. Um, okay, uh, let me see. I don't I don't remember. See, I have I have um, yeah. Let's let's go to um, Galatians. Four, uh, nine, and eleven. And he's, yeah. Verse nine. I'll just read through verse 11. But now, after ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements unto, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Ye observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. He's saying, I worked for you guys. I, I fought for you. And You've you've walked away from it. You you and I'm reading this as you had salvation and now you're you're casting that off. Um in, okay, in Ephesians 4 verse 30 it talks about grieving the Holy Spirit. I don't um I'll just quickly read that and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So here's that, I mean, the sealing unto the day of redemption would be kind of the, um, that would be on the uh, Calvinist side, but it says grieve not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that's, how you're, that's how you're sealed is the Holy Spirit. So don't grieve Him. Um, okay, uh, I'm just not feel like we need to trim some of these even that I have. Uh, let me see. First Timothy one. First Timothy one six. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm.
Okay, from, from uh, I almost need to give more context to this, but I'll just read verse 1. I mean, chapter 1, verse 6 and 19. Uh, from which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain janglings. And verse 19, holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away, what did they put away? They, they put away faith and a good conscience, put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck of whom is these two guys whom I have delivered to Satan. Um, if um, I think uh, Hebrews two, um, one and three. Wherefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if we, for if the word fitly spoken of, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and obedience and disobedience received a just and recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto them that heard him? Um. Hebrews, Hebrews 12, um, and I'm afraid I'm skipping over some really good stuff, but um, okay, I have Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, and then verse 10, verse 14 through 17, and verse 25. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary wearied and faint in your minds. Uh, verse 10, um, just the idea of that we might be partakers of His holiness. Um, uh, okay, 14 through 17. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator, profane person, as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. And verse 25, see that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall we shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Um, uh, we gotta we gotta look at this one too. Um, Second Peter two, um, let me see, eighteen, eighteen mentions those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Um, while they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For whom a man is overcome, the same as he is brought in bondage. And then verse uh, 20 through 21. <clears throat> For after that they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. 
For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Um, so there's... There's um, just the picture of, of, you know, yeah, I was, I was hoping and, and trying to think, what is the picture, what is a word picture that I could use and thought about a, you know, a river or a fire, and I don't know, um, but what is it that could help us understand um, what, what is truth in this, in this whole issue or or you know trying to know what is true um the i don't know how long ago it was maybe six months ago i went to a lady's place and um, we were just having a wonderful discussion um, about Scripture. And, and uh, she had taught Bible studies and, and very astute, um, student to the Word or whatever. Um, her understanding would have been you, you don't lose your salvation. If you walk away from God... Um, you were never a believer in the first place, um, and and the okay. You probably know kind of where I stand on the issue, um, just based on based on some of what I've read. Um, the 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 tally at the end. Um, was was amazing to me um but i'd like for you to to go through and and wait it yourself i'm hoping that we can that we can link to the comments um links link the spreadsheet to the comments and you can go through it um if you if you care to and and reweight it or whatever see what see what your tally comes out to um, but even more important than than that um, if you turn with me to first uh, Timothy 1 verse 4 and we were we were right here and I let me see. Okay, I'm going to back up and read a few verses in front of verse 6. Um, Neither give heed to fables, to endless genealogies, which minister questions, rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity, out of a pure heart and of good conscience and of faith unfeigned. And then verse 6 from which some having swerved aside, swerved, have turned aside unto vain janglings. This whole thing, if, if you, like the lady that I, was, that I was doing some work at, if you believe that if you live right, it shows that you are saved, and if you walk away from it, it shows you were never saved in the first place. I'm actually okay with you holding that position. Um, I'm if you believe that you can, you know, you have to live right. If you do wrong, you have to confess that before God, get back on track, and and I'm okay with that. I think sometimes we can we can start 
getting irritated with each other because you're not your doctrine is and and doctrine does matter i think how we believe affects i believe therefore have i spoken i is you know and and we also believe and therefore speak or whatever um you you live out of the doctrine that you believe you might you might even state a different doctrine than what you truly believe i i believe that's possible um but i i think this is this is how we're going to lay it to rest i believe this argument is one not the spreadsheet doesn't lay it to rest that's 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 actually going to stir it up the way we're going to lay it to rest is if if you believe you have to live a godly life to be saved that's how we lay it to rest it doesn't it does it does it matter after that um so that let me see um one more one more passage back to okay second peter 3 16 um and this is peter talking about paul's writings and and so we can look at this person you know arminianism or the calvinist you know the person that follows calvin or arminian or whoever we follow okay as also in all his epistles speaking in them of things of these things in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction and i have this highlighted in green um ye therefore beloved seeing ye know these things before beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness and i'll just go ahead and throw verse 18 in but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ to him be glory both now and forever amen I've got a few papers if someone wants to go over it this afternoon or whatever. Um, I can, I'll try and make more if there's more of a demand. Um, I think it's good for us to stretch ourselves to look into some of this, but let's not do it to the dividing of the body. Um, again, if there's, if there's error that leads a person to live ungodly um, or there, there are doctrines that lead us into um, lead, lead us away from God or have severe consequences in our spiritual um, life that's worth <laughs> that's worth um, being under our saddle if you will um, but but yeah I, anyway I was I was challenged with it um i hope it wasn't too long and labor i know there was um a lot of things and i i i struggled with exactly what scriptures to share and anyway um trust that it was um challenging in in some way um so let's go ahead and close in prayer um father thank you for thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for eternity. And Father, that's something that is unfathomable. And we can hurt ourselves trying to trying to think about it. And this this whole thing of you foreknowing and yet giving us free will is something that that we can hurt ourselves as well. That we can get all tied up about and and, and not not understand father help us just to just to uh, live in the simplicity of your word and and uh, follow your commandments help us to hear your voice and to follow as one of your sheep go with us i pray in jesus name amen